Hare Krishna, and this is Shravanam Diaries. We are continuing to read The Perfection of Yoga by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Jai. Chapter 2, Yoga is Work and Devotion. We have heard the names of so many different yogas and yogis, but in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that the actual yogi is he who has surrendered himself fully unto me. Krishna proclaims that there is no difference between renunciation, sannyas, and yoga. Wow. Yam sanyasamiti prahur yogam tam vidhi pandava nahya sanyastak sankalpo yogi bhavati kaschana. Quote, what is called renunciation is the same as yoga, or linking oneself with the supreme. For no one can become a yogi unless he renounces the desire for sense gratification. Unquote. Bhagavad Gita 6.2 In Bhagavad Gita there are three basic types of yoga delineated, karma yoga, jnana yoga and bhakti yoga. The systems of yoga may be likened unto a staircase. Someone may be on the first step, someone may be halfway up or someone may be on the top step. When one is elevated to certain levels, he is known as a karma yogi, jnana yogi, etc. In all cases, the service to the Supreme Lord is the same. It is a difference in elevation only. Thus, Sri Krishna tells Arjuna that he must understand that renunciation, sannyasa, and yoga are the same because without being freed from desire and sense gratification, one can become neither a yogi nor a sannyasi. There are some yogis who perform yoga for a profit, but this is not real yoga. Everything must be engaged in the service of the Lord. Whatever we do, as an ordinary worker, or as a sannyasi, or as a yogi, or as a philosopher, must be done in Krishna consciousness. When we are absorbed in the thought of serving Krishna, and when we act, act in that consciousness, we can become real sannyasis and real yogis. For those who are taking the first step up the staircase of the yoga system, there is work. One should not simply think, because he is beginning yoga, he should stop working. Okay, one should not think that simply because he is beginning yoga, he should stop working. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna asks Arjuna to become a yogi, but he never tells him to cease from fighting, quite the contrary. Of course, one may ask how a person may be a yogi and at the same time a warrior. Our conception of yoga practice is that of sitting very straight, with legs crossed and eyes half closed, staring at the tip of our nose and concentrating in this way in a lonely place. So how is it that Krishna is asking Arjuna to become a yogi and at the same time participate in a ghastly civil war? That is the mystery of Bhagavad Gita. One can remain a fighting man and at the same time be the highest yogi, the highest sannyasi. How is this possible? In Krishna consciousness. One simply has to fight for Krishna, work for Krishna, eat for Krishna, sleep for Krishna and dedicate all activities to Krishna. In this way one becomes the highest yogi and the highest sannyasi. That is the secret. In the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna instructs Arjuna how to perform meditational yoga, but Arjuna re rejects it as too difficult. How then is Arjuna considered to be a great yogi? Although Krishna saw that Arjuna was rejecting that meditational system, he proclaimed Arjuna to be the highest yogi because, quote, you are always thinking of me, unquote. Thinking of Krishna is the essence of all yoga systems, of the hatha, karma, jnana, bhakti, or any other symptom, any other system of yoga, sacrifice, or charity. Krishna, we should print this out and hang it at the like main entrance or like the main hall of every single yoga center you've ever visited or you'll ever see or that ever exists. 
thinking of Krishna is the essence of all yoga systems of the Hatha, Karma, Jnana, Bhakti or any other system of yoga, sacrifice or charity. Haribo! <clears throat> all the recommended activities for spiritual realization end in Krishna consciousness, in thinking always of Krishna. The actual perfection of human life lies in being always Krishna conscious and always being aware of Krishna while performing all types of activities. In the preliminary stage one is advised to always work for Krishna. One must be always searching out some duty or some engagement, for it is a bad policy to remain idle even for a second. When one actually becomes advanced through such engagements, then he may not work physically, but he is always engaged within by constantly thinking of Krishna. In the preliminary stage, however, one is always advised to engage one's senses in the service of Krishna. There are a variety of activities one can perform in serving Krishna. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness is intended to help direct aspiring devotees in these activities. For those working in Krishna Consciousness, there are simply not enough hours in the day to serve Krishna, and that's true. This is so true, okay? Like a side point of this whole thing. I'm trying, one of the things, one of the reasons I started this podcast is because basically I'm a very busy person. It's like without any uh, ego said, I, I do have different, different services to do. I'm, I'm a graphic designer. I'm doing social media marketing. I'm uh, like working on different projects. Basically, I'm also aspiring musician and like there's different things to be involved. I'm a housewife. So I really felt like I really wanted to like, you know, daily focus on my reading of Prabhupada's books. And I just felt like this would be something that would really you know, make, make me do this 100% on a daily basis. Uh, so I can tell you for sure that being devotees, being in Krishna consciousness, there's simply not enough hours in the day to serve Krishna. This is so true. This is so true. And it's not like, you know, like we're working and we're just, you know, exhausted and we're just waiting for some holidays, for some, you know, vacation. No, it's, it's great. Like, you just feel that your body would be a little bit more, like, even though we're investing in our bodies to be strong and healthy and stuff, but you just wish that all this ecstasy of serving the Lord <laughs> would just be... Yeah, so this is true, basically. Anyway, Hare Krishna. Uh-huh. Yes. There are always activities, engagements, both day and night, which the student of Krishna consciousness performs joyfully. True, also true. That is the stage of real happiness, constant engagement for Krishna and spreading Krishna consciousness around the world. Oh, this is just... Oh, okay. In the material world, one may become very tired. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, I'll stop this. Okay. In the material world, one may become very tired if he works all the time, but if one works in Krishna consciousness, he can chant Hare Krishna and engage in devotional service 24 hours a day and never get tired. But if we vibrate some mundane vibration, then we soon become exhausted. There is no question of becoming tired on the spiritual platform. The spiritual platform is absolute. In the material world, everyone is working for sense gratification. The profits of one's labor in the material world are used to gratify one's senses. But a real yogi does not desire such fruits. He has no desire other than Krishna, and Krishna is already there. Jai, we have completed second chapter. It was a short and super sweet chapter, isn't it? So thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description. Yes, and we'll see you next time. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for tuning in.